Thanks for tuning in to this week's news recap. The second largest hack in DeFi history. Wormhole was exploited on Wednesday for 120,000 wrapped ETH. According to Twitter user Tony Intern, the attacker was able to steal almost all of the wormhole wrapped ETH, which accounts for 20% of the $1.6 billion in wrapped ETH locked into Solana. With Ethereum hovering at around $2,600, the exploit is worth over $300 million and ranks as the second largest hack in DeFi history, data from Rekt shows. Wormhole is a cross-chain bridge, meaning Wormhole locks assets into a contract on one chain and mints a wrapped version of the asset onto another chain. According to Paradigm researcher Sam CZ Sun, the attacker spoofed a Guardian signature and minted 120,000 ETH on Solana without having to bridge ETH in the first place. A Guardian is a node that signs off on transactions between chains. By creating a fraudulent Guardian signature, the attacker was able to mint wrapped ETH on Solana out of thin air and move the fake wrapped ETH to Ethereum in exchange for real ETH. Optimism's Kelvin Fichter also came to the same conclusion. The Wormhole team announced that the vulnerability was patched at 7.41 p.m. on Wednesday night. By Thursday morning, the bridge was live. Jump Crypto replaced the 120,000 ETH on Wormhole's ETH contract so that wrapped ETH was once again fully backed on Solana. In the hours after the attack occurred, it appears the Wormhole team reached out to the hacker's address to offer a $10 million white hat bounty in exchange for returning the funds. As of press time, there is no update on this front. NFT volume in January skyrocketed, despite a choppy crypto market. Crypto started 2022 as a $2.2 trillion asset class, according to data from CoinMarketCap. 31 days later, the market sat at $1.7 trillion, a 22% decline. Tokens that ended last year on a hot streak were particularly hit hard by the market correction, with 2021 darlings Terra and Solana down more than 40% on the month. Blue chips, Bitcoin, and Ether were also hit hard in January, dropping roughly 20% and 25% respectively. Despite the drawdown, non-fungible tokens had a record month. In January, NFT marketplace volume hit an all-time high of $6.75 billion, doubling last August's previous record of $3.31 billion, data from the block shows. OpenSea led the way, facilitating 60% of January's NFT volume. However, LooksRare, an NFT marketplace that debuted on January 10th via a vampire attack on OpenSea, saw over $2 billion in volume on its platform. Solana NFTs also had a big month, surpassing $1 billion in historical volume, and Magic Eden, an NFT marketplace, did a record $300 million plus in January. High NFT trading volume coincided with tons of mainstream adoption. Twitter implemented NFTs into profile pictures, and Reddit is testing a similar feature. YouTube and Meta are both rumored to be working on NFT products. In addition, celebrity adoption of NFTs was rampant, with Justin Bieber and Gwyneth Paltrow joining the Bored Ape Yacht Club community. U.S. stakers could be in for a tax reprieve. Last year, Joshua and Jessica Jarrett sued the IRS for a refund, claiming that they erroneously paid taxes on crypto staking rewards as if it were income. The lawsuit argues that staking income should not be treated as income until it is sold. This week, the IRS offered the Jarrett's their refund without explaining the reasoning behind the refund, which would also mean that the IRS wouldn't be setting a precedent. However, Joshua said that they are not taking the refund, explaining, I refused the offer because I know that until my case receives an official ruling, I have no certainty they won't try to tax me again. In essence, Josh sued the IRS for clarity on taxation of new tokens created through staking. The IRS tried to pay him off to drop the suit. He turned down the money to continue the case and seek binding precedent for us all, wrote the Blockchain Association's Jake Chervinsky on Twitter. According to coin tracker's Shehan Chandra Sekera, if decided in favor of the Jarrett's, the case would only set a precedent for proof of stake staking income and would not cover interest, mining, or airdrop income. Relatedly, 
Coinbase has teamed up with TurboTax to allow users to convert state and federal tax refunds directly to crypto via the exchange. Fidelity thinks Bitcoin is superior money. Fidelity Digital Assets published a report this week titled Bitcoin First, arguing that Bitcoin is fundamentally different from other digital assets and would most likely be the winning cryptocurrency in a multi-chain or winner-take-all future. Quote, Bitcoin's first technological breakthrough was not as a superior payment technology, but as a superior form of money. As a monetary good, Bitcoin is unique. Therefore, not only do we believe investors should consider Bitcoin first in order to understand digital assets, but that Bitcoin should be considered first and separate from all other digital assets that have come after it. Additionally, this week, during a conversation at MicroStrategy's Bitcoin for Corporations conference, Christine Sandler, head of sales and marketing at Fidelity Digital Assets, revealed that the company started mining cryptocurrency and accumulating Bitcoin in 2014. Diem never launched, but Silvergate coin might. According to a statement on Monday, the Diem Association will begin the process of winding down over the next few weeks after a tumultuous three years. The announcement officially retires Diem, formerly Libra, Facebook's stablecoin project. Disclosure, I write a Facebook bulletin newsletter. In Diem Group's statement, CEO Stuart Levy revealed that Diem's demise was influenced by regulatory scrutiny. In the United States, a senior regulator informed us, the Diem Association, that Diem was the best designed stablecoin project the U.S. government had seen. Levy added that it became clear from our dialogue with federal regulators that the project could not move ahead. As a result, the best path forward was to sell the Diem Group's assets, as we have done today to Silvergate, said Levy. Silvergate Bank is purchasing the remains of Diem for $182 million. The digital asset-friendly bank partnered with the Meta Project over a year ago to create a stablecoin pegged to USD in a last-ditch effort to revive the project. With its $182 million purchase, the bank said it will use Diem's existing tech to enable a Silvergate-issued stablecoin, which it hopes to do so in 2022. India welcomes crypto with a 30% tax. India plans to tax income earned from transacting with virtual digital assets at a rate of 30%. There has been a phenomenal increase in transactions in virtual digital assets, said India's finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. The magnitude and frequency of these transactions have made it imperative to provide for a specific tax regime. Interestingly, neither crypto or NFTs were directly mentioned in the speech. Instead, the term virtual digital asset was used. The budget also provided a roadmap for the launch of a digital rupee. According to Sitaram, a digital rupee will be issued using blockchain and other technologies to be issued by the Reserve Bank of India starting 2022 to 2023. This will give a big boost to the economy. On a related note, Thailand also announced crypto tax news, stating that it is abandoning plans to impose a 15% tax on crypto. NFT backlash shuts down worms before it even began. Despite the success of NFTs in January, many traditional companies entering the space have been facing intense criticism from environmentally conscious fans. For example, this week, video game publisher Team17 reneged on its plans to launch an NFT collection based on the Worms video game franchise, which has sold over 75 million games in its lifetime. Team 17 is today announcing an end to the Meta Worms NFT project. We have listened to our Teamsters, development partners, and our games communities, and the concerns they've expressed and have therefore taken the decision to step back from the NFT space, tweeted the company. Team 17's statement came after its partner, AgroCrab condemned NFTs. We believe NFTs cannot be environmentally friendly or useful and really are just an overall fucking grift, wrote the firm before threatening to end its relationship with Team 17 if its NFT plans weren't canceled. Other companies, such as Discord and Ubisoft, have received similarly vociferous backlash from their fan bases regarding NFT and crypto integrations. GameStop is a crypto company now. 
On Thursday, GameStop unveiled a partnership with the Ethereum Layer 2 solution, Immutable X, to launch its own NFT marketplace. Disclosure, Immutable is a former sponsor of my show. The two companies have set up a $100 million grant to support developers using the marketplace as part of the deal. In related news, gaming company Ubisoft has agreed to enter the Hedera Hashgraph ecosystem and operate a node while exploring the blockchain's distributed ledger technology. This comes shortly after Ubisoft launched a Tezos-powered NFT platform for its games. Time for fun bits. Yes, Dune Analytics raised exactly $69,420,000. Another week, another series of huge fundraises. FTX Trading Limited, the Sam Bankman fried led firm, announced a $400 million Series C raise on Monday, valuing the company at $32 billion. In the past six months, FTX, the third ranked crypto exchange by CoinMarketCap, has brought in $1.8 billion in funding and has seen its valuation increase 75%. FTX US recently announced a monster raise of its own at a valuation of $8 billion. Phantom, the Solana-based crypto wallet, closed a $109 million Series B fundraising round that valued the firm at $1.2 billion. Paradigm led the round with crypto powerhouses A16Z, Variant Fund, Jump Capital, and DeFi Alliance, among others, participating. The raise coincides with Phantom's release of its iOS app. The firm plans to double its headcount in the near future. This week, the data visualization firm Dune Analytics also announced new funding led by KOTU, bringing in a mimetic $69,420,000 and garnering a new valuation of $1 billion. The data firm plans to use the fund to build a Community Application Programming Interface, or API, that will allow users to compare data across chains in a single query. Additionally, the Financial Times reports that Yuga Labs, the developers behind Board Ape Yacht Club, are looking to raise at a $5 billion valuation from A16Z. Thanks so much for joining us today. To learn more about Morgan and Trina, check out the show notes for this episode. Unchained is produced by me, Laura Shin, with help from Anthony Yoon, Daniel Ness, Mark Murdoch, Shashank, and CLK Transcription. Thanks for listening. <laughs>